Another day, another beta. Welcome to macOS Tahoe 26. It's Apple's latest operating system update for their Mac environment. And we're gonna take a look at some of the exciting changes that they've made. I'm sure you guys straight away can see that there's a new design down the bottom here for all the icons. So let's jump straight into the settings and have a look at what we can change. And immediately what we're presented with is a brand new settings design, which has this new liquid glass display or liquid glass design that Apple has been touting across all of its devices. And you've got this cool kind of transparent icon set up now. Does it look good? Leave your comments below. For me, I'm still getting used to it. I thought these icons looked cool, but I actually am using the normal icon pack just because it feels a little bit easier to see. So how do we go and change that? Well, if we jump over here into appearance, you'll see that we still have the normal auto and dark mode, which changes the appearance of the operating system. But immediately you'll also see that the taskbar up the top is transparent now. So they don't have that little gray bar going all the way across, just shows your background. And when you full screen an app, it covers, it covers the, uh, it doesn't cover the bar. And even if you hide it, it doesn't actually expand over the um, webcam indent on MacBooks, which is a little bit annoying. I really wish it just kind of expanded all the way through. But let's have a look what other settings we've got here. So we can change the icons back to the default and you'll see even that the default icons have got this new rounded type of style to them a little bit more. I would, I don't know how to even explain it. They've got a different look to it, put it that way. We've got the dark mode, which we can change to as well. They also have those new updated icons, but the one that you've been seeing in everywhere is this clear setup and you can change it between like a light version and a dark version. Depends on the wallpaper that you have, but personally I've been using it like this. And on this wallpaper, I have it set up with the, the dark mode. So that's the first interesting part. And you'll see that that design also flows over to Apple's own apps. So now they've got this like menu bar or sidebar that's floating here on the side, which has this little bit like a, an easier to read in my opinion, layout but i don't know does it look that glassy that transparent at the moment not really but it has this fresh look so you'll see the settings option sidebar is very similar here if we jump into finder we also have this new menu bar style on the on the side and even across the top here you see you have these kind of like floating designs with this shadowy look but it's not very like glassy. I kind of expected it to be more transparent and see-through. So that's a very interesting little design change that they've done. And with the menu bar, there's actually quite a lot of different changes as well. So normally you jump over here into your quick settings. And what I've noticed is they've kind of refined some of the controls and options for your Mac and given you a little bit more control. And what I mean by that is you'll see here that obviously you've got that transparent glass new design update. But if you go into edit controls, you can actually add more shortcuts to both the sidebar for control, as well as for the menu bar. So how does it work? So for example, if we wanted to display battery, we can click plus here, and you'll see we have the option to add it to the control center, which will add it over here but we also have the option to add it to something up the top here so we'll take something else for example we'll take the alarm and we'll go add to menu bar and what it does is it adds that up the top there so apple's giving us a little bit more customization and control over our settings and to be quite frank i really like this because it even nicely integrates the sound controls here You've got options to change the display brightness and you can jump in here and control anything else. It's just bringing everything into a more unified experience 
which I do kind of like. However, though it is a beta, I have noticed that a lot of these controls and shortcut keys on the keyboard and things are still not functioning properly. So I would kind of hold up and wait to the uh, full public version comes out because this still here is a little bit choppy. And you'll see also here back in the settings, you're able to hide the menu bar completely if you want, which will remove it until you bring your finger, uh, your cursor up the top. But like I said, it doesn't actually allow much uh, coverage of your uh, full Mac screen unless you're going external, which like I said, it's a little bit annoying that you can't have the whole, the whole screen changed. The snap features are still pretty much the same. I don't see any big changes here just, to, just yet. And I don't really see this transparency or this glass to be <laughs> really, really different at the moment. I kind of expected it to be able to see through, but we can flick that back on. And you'll see as well that we have a few more controls here that we can play around with. Apple intelligence, nothing really has changed. You have the ability to change your wallpapers. Uh, that's still very similar. They've integrated it a little bit different and moved some of the settings around. But I haven't seen too much of anything else really change here apart from, apart from that main um, design style. So let's see what else we got. If you hit Command and Spacebar, you'll bring up Spotlight Search. And when you hover over Spotlight, you'll see here that you can click onto Applications and you'll have a full list of all the apps that are installed on your computer. I actually changed this to have it like a list view, but you can change it to be as an icon view. You can change it to be done by category, but I kind of find this to be a little bit hard to navigate. So I just have it done as a list and alphabetically. And if we go back, we can now obviously also look through our files. And there's been an update here to allow you to do actions which is very interesting because you can kind of automate a lot of processes. So if you, for example, go send email, you can then select a contact and just do it straight from the keyboard rather than opening the app. However, I don't find this to be that beneficial because I just don't use the operating system that way, but I can see an advantage to having that there. And the cool thing is that they've integrated a clipboard manager now. So you can, whenever you copy something on your Mac, it's going to present itself in the clipboard. You can clear the history if you want, but when you're jumping between applications, it allows you to just go over to your command space, click on clipboard and click onto whatever you might have had uh, saved without needing to go back and copy and paste again, which is a cool operating system level update, which I'm very glad that they've introduced. Now you can also go a little bit further with your customization by actually changing the folder design if you would like. So for example, I've got a little photos folder here that I dump things into and I can change this to a different color. I can add a little emoji if I want. So you can see there's a whole variety of different things. You know, we can do a little coffee there and that way it, it makes it a little bit easier to see which folder you want to jump to. Now, Apple's also done a few updates to their own applications. So Shortcuts has got a pretty large uh, overview and you'll see here that this is a very powerful application that does kind of macros and automations that really deserves its own full video and understanding on what you can do with it. But it's a way of you to create shortcuts that you can also then add into your control center over here, which I think is something I'm gonna to have to go a little bit deeper diving in on a secondary video just to see how I can benefit. You know, for example, here I've got some shortcuts for like searching YouTube or downloading a video, which is, there's a lot of power here in itself. The other update is that on Image Playground, you now, which thankfully has the ability to navigate over to ChatGPT to do your images. I still don't think this app is really like the best because it doesn't seem to be giving the, <laughs> the most amazing results for what AI image generation can do. So I don't think I'll end up using it, but there are some slight tweaks and updates on this particular application. Safari, I was showing you guys a little bit earlier, 
it doesn't look too much different. And what I've noticed is that most of the options and things that are here are all cosmetic changes. You can also use the phone app. They've done some changes on that. I can't open that up because it's a bit private. And you've got obviously messages that have been updated as well as an application to allow you to change backgrounds and stuff. But until everyone's running the latest operating system, nothing is going to really change. So there are like these little tweaks that I would say that are done across the operating system, um, more cosmetic than anything. And as the new changes or as I find new things that I believe are beneficial to share, I'll most probably create a little reel about them. So if you guys haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you check out my other videos. And I hope this uh, gave you guys some insight to the latest beta operating system by Apple.